Hi, everybody. John Harris here with my pal and co-host, Bill. How you doing, Bill? All right, Johnny. How you doing? All right, pal. We've had uh, busy weeks, not just in football, but both of us uh, with other stuff, too. Holiday week, you know. Um, so uh, one more two or three day stretch here. We do have a game today, tonight, actually. Um, and we'll go into that and then uh, we'll go through the rest of these. Um, uh, first off, before we do, let's talk about our sponsor as we do our last show, our New Year's Eve Eve extravaganza, Bill, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, spectacular. Uh, week 17 picks coming up in just a minute. Our week 16 review, which will be short and sweet, also coming up in a minute. But before we do, let's talk about our pal, uh, Dennis Ingraldi over at Vineland Realty Corporation in Vineland, New Jersey. Dennis and his folks, uh, the office located at 634 East Landis Avenue in Vineland, New Jersey, can help you with everything from residential to business property needs. Uh, if you want to lease a place, uh, rent out a place, rent a place, sell a place, whether it's business or residential, give the folks at the Vineland Realty Corporation a call at 856-690-9482 and tell them you heard about them from the cheap seats here at Public John Media. That's Vineland Realty Corporation, 634 East Landis Avenue in Vineland, New Jersey, 856-690-9482. We thank Dennis for all his support over the last couple of years. And uh, once again, we thank him for everything here at Public John Media and uh, from the cheap seats here as well. Uh, Bill? Uh, we can do the review real fast. It's because there's not a whole lot different. We both finished about, uh, let me see, when we just did straight up picks, we were nine and seven. So we were again above 500. Against the spread, close to 500. We had two pushes and we were, uh, you were six and eight. I was seven and seven with two pushes. So only a one game difference there as well. Over under, you were seven, eight, and one with a push. I was eight, seven, and one with a push. Again, one game difference. So yep. that brings our numbers for the season to very close to each other. Again, as we always all seem to be, Bill, usually a week or two in, one of us is ahead of the other, and then gradually we catch up. Uh, you on your picks are almost at the uh, you are right at 60%, 150 wins, 100 losses. Uh, against the spread, 134 wins, 102 losses with 13 pushes during the season to make it 56.8%. And over under 132 and 113 with seven pushes, and that's at 54%. I, on the other hand, a uh, little bit less than you, one percentage point. I'm at 59%, 144 wins and 100 losses on my picks. Uh, the spread, 133 to 108 in losses and two pushes at 55.2% means you're a little over a point and a half percentage points ahead of me, uh, which equals probably about a game, game and a half. Uh, over under, I'm at 133, 112 and seven pushes at 53%, exactly one game difference uh, you would have me buy. So you're getting me on everything, but it's either percentage point or one point. We're real close. Uh, last week, the big difference is I took a shot on the Jets against Washington. That was a choker. You took Washington. Good move by you, my friend. Um, and I'm trying to see who else. I picked somebody else. Uh, we both took Jacksonville, and I, I don't understand. Well, yeah, probably should cool. have. It's Baker Mayfield playing his cojones off, man. He, He's doing the job. We both took Denver against New England, and boy, did that suck. Um, <laughs> and it leads to Russell Wilson being benched, and most people think he's played his last game in Denver. They'll figure out a way to do something, but they're going to eat a lot of money at a 30 plus million dollar contract uh, for mm -hmm. just next season. So even if they trade him, you know they're not going to be able to trade him heads up for anybody. So they're going to eat some money on the cap and with his guaranteed salary. Um, the we both picked the Giants to cover the spread against Philly. I think we both look like geniuses because 
<laughs> Same old thing, Eastern Conference of the NFC. Uh, Giants stay close. You're not going to run away from it. It was a 13 and a half point spread, and I think it was only a seven or five point victory. So, and it was one of those Eagles held on kind of things. It took a interception yeah. in the end zone to uh, to seal the deal on the last drive. Uh, Tyrod Taylor is a big improvement. I think uh, they benched Tommy DeVito at halftime. Tommy Cutlet uh, was was uh, sitting in the oven for a little bit, and uh, <laughs> and Taylor's going to start this week. So uh, we both lost San Francisco and Baltimore. Who knew? Um, Baltimore looked fantastic. San Francisco, uh, as uh, Chevy Chase would say in Caddyshack, they weren't. They weren't. They weren't good. They looked. Yeah, with that with that game there, I mean, it, it, it surprised us. But the thing was, they came in with a game plan, and I don't know. Once he threw the second interception, they should have just run the ball. I mean, you got the yes. best running back in the, in the league. Yeah, you got, more. and his backup you running the ball. Back. You know, yeah, so his backup I, I, for most teams in the league, and you use Debo Samuel as a runner a lot too. Should have yeah. done some more. So once again, the coach and you know the. I, I think the I think you're right. The the uh, the down the play wasn't very good. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh was a surprise to both of us too. Uh, Mason Rudolph, who knew he would come out and suddenly look like a, a Hall of Fame quarterback? He chewed Cincinnati up. And Pittsburgh's D was uh, all over the uh, backup for Cincinnati. So uh, who knew that Pittsburgh could do that? Chiefs are kind of hoping they can do that this week against Cincinnati. Uh, we both got a win on pick and a loss on Buffalo. They didn't cover against the Chargers. It took a field goal in overtime to beat the Chargers, who have no quarterback, no offense, and really, no head coach. It's a it's an interim coach, but you know that always turns out. Look at the Raiders. That turns out to be a bump sometimes because guys are playing for their jobs, even if they're not going to be Chargers next year. They want to still play in the NFL, so they're looking for 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 roster spots somewhere next year. So they're playing their hearts out because I think the Chargers are going to make a clean sweep of everything when that's over. Yeah, I believe so too. We're okay on Detroit, Green Bay. Uh, I took Seattle. It didn't matter. We both took Seattle. That ended up being a push as far as the spread was concerned. Uh, Cleveland, yeah, Cleveland took care of Houston without Stroud. I think that's what hurt there. Um, big upset for both of us, Indianapolis and Atlanta. That surprised me. It really did. I mean, Heineke's a better quarterback than Ritter, but I – I didn't think they could hold off Indy that well, but they did. Um, and we both won the under. And that was the only way Atlanta was going to win was defense, and that's what they did. Uh, we talked about Washington the Jets, with Jacksonville, Tampa Bay. We both took the bullet on Jacksonville. Uh, once once uh, Lawrence got injured, Jacksonville's offense was about done for the day. And Baker Mayfield is still playing well. Um, Dallas, Miami, we both took the bullet on Dallas. Yeah, we, uh, no, you took Dallas and lost. I took Miami and won as far as the pick is concerned. Well, we both pushed, uh, as far as the spread was concerned. New England, Denver, we talked about that. Uh, Chiefs and the Raiders, Raiders didn't even complete a pass in the second half at all <laughs> not even a screen pass nothing in the flat did not complete a pass and still beat kansas city um chiefs did have a chance to win it it was raiders defense all day yeah, long raiders scored two touchdowns and set on defense, defense. Touchdowns on defense. Seven, didn't score seconds. anything on offense except a field goal nothing and they were without josh jacobs who bill you reported uh, earlier um, that Josh Jacobs, again, is out this week. Uh, so that could hurt the Raiders. We'll go through that in a minute. We talked about the Giants and, and the Eagles with the Giants almost winning, um, except for an interception in the end zone. And we talked about Baltimore and San Francisco. So uh, this week's games. Uh, ready, Bill? Yes, sir. We got you. All right. Tonight, the only game... Today, today slash tonight, Detroit is going to Dallas. 
Uh, Dallas is giving up five and a half points, and the over-under is 52 and a half. I took Dallas across the board with the over. Uh, I took Dallas. They should get back on the winning way. But uh, just just in case they don't, I took Detroit to plus five and a half. All right. So you're going to take Detroit to cover? Yep. Over or under, sir? Oh, Over. Excuse me. Okay. I mean, I'm hoping it's a shootout. I got Goff as my my okay. uh, fantasy That's quarterback. Fantasy guy this week? If at the, if I'm in the finals, so okay, uh, go get him Goff. And I think he might. Dallas is a little weak across the middle. Like their linebackers, especially once Van Der Esch got hurt, they're struggling a little bit. Uh, San Francisco at Washington. The point spread is 13 and a half. And over under is 49 and a half. It dropped from 50. I don't know why. Um, I took San Francisco across the board with the over. And I did the same thing. Okay. They might score 40 themselves. So uh, well, that, that's my thinking. They might just pump it all out themselves. Uh, Miami, Baltimore. Baltimore giving up three. And it's a 46 and a half point spread uh, over under. I took Baltimore in the over. Flowers is out for Baltimore. That's who it was I was thinking of. Uh, with a calf or questionable. He's not out. But he's questionable, but he didn't practice Thursday. That's usually a bad sign um, with a calf injury. Yeah, I think the this should be a pretty good game. Waddle's Waddle, the second receiver for Miami's out, right? Um, uh, but I, I'm with. I think the Ravens win the game here. But I'm going to take it. It was three and a half, so it dropped down to three. So, yeah, it did but, drop down to still, three. But, but I'll still take the Dolphins. You're going to take cover, Miami to it, cover. Probably going to be a field goal game anyway. So, I mean, yeah, probably going to be a push. Probably going to be a push. Uh, over under. Uh, I got the over. Okay. Arizona, Philadelphia, 48 point over under. Philly's picked by 12. Um, I picked Philly to win the game, but you know what? I am, as we speak, because I didn't even pick it, I just know Arizona always plays Philly. The Cardinals ever since I was a kid when they were in St. Louis, always played the Eagles tough, same as the Giants. I'm going to take the under 48 because Philly's offense doesn't impress me. Arizona's doesn't either, but I think Arizona can cover here. So I'm going to take Philly to win, Arizona to cover, and the under. Uh, I think this is going to be uh, a tune-up game for the Eagles. I'm not an Eagle fan by any means, but uh... – I think they get the job done. I think they put a spanking on Arizona. So uh, I'm going to take the uh, Eagles minus the 12 and okay. the over. And the over. All right. Uh, Ram, uh, yeah, Rams, Giants. It's a six point spread now. Uh, the Rams giving up six, 43 and a half points on the over under. I took the Rams across the board with the over, even though Tyron Taylor's playing. Uh, I, which I think is a step up from Tommy DeVito. I I still think the Rams have too much offense for the Giants to hang with them. Yeah, I got I got the Rams across the board also. Uh, I don't know why. I have the under here, but I don't know why. Uh, because I think the Rams would, it could be like a 30-17 to 17 game. So I'm, I'm going to go to the over also. You go with the over? Okay. Yeah, I would have wondered that myself if you went with the under. New England and Buffalo. Buffalo is favored by 14. It is a 40 point over under. I took Buffalo to win. I took New England to cover. I mean, Buffalo struggled last week with the Chargers, who don't, to me, don't even have a team. <laughs> so <laughs> New England's offense the last couple weeks seems to have gotten a little ba better with Bailey Zappi at quarterback. Um, and they always play each other tough. Uh, I, so I took New England to cover, Buffalo to win. I took the over 40 points. Yeah, the over should be uh, a no-brainer here. But uh, And I'm taking Buffalo at home, and I'm going to lay the 14. Okay. So you think Buffalo will cover the 14? New England, New England needs to lose to get a better draft pick. And, uh, <laughs> I like that. Buffalo, and Buffalo needs yeah. to win. 
And Buffalo's at home, and they, they need to win. Absolutely. I don't know what the weather's supposed to be, but it's still going to be chilly, no less than that. But New England should be used to that part. Yep. New Orleans, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay favored by two and a half. It's in Tampa Bay, and the over-under is at 42 and a half. I took Tampa Bay. I took the under uh, 42 and a half. I know that's not a high over-under number, but Baker's been winning games 20 to 17, 21, 14. Um, I think Tampa Bay's defense is pretty good. Baker Mayfield's doing enough for them to win. I see Tampa Bay winning, but I don't, uh, and I see them uh, obviously covering by more than two and a half, uh, but I think it'll be under. Yeah, it's funny because every time I take Tampa, they lose. If I go against them, they win. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, uh, but I think this is going to be a shootout. I think it's going to be one of those games where it's going to be aired out. I really do. So I'm going to take Tampa Bay and the over. Okay. Well, I don't know if New Orleans is still in the hunt. If they are, then they don't have a choice. Well, to shoot it, it out. It's seven, it's, it's seven and eight. If they win, they'll be eight and eight with Tampa. Oh, I forgot so they, they are in the hunt because of uh, that bad division. Yes. They yeah, so they get this win. I think if Tampa wins, they they uh, clinch the division. You're absolutely right. Yeah, so you're right. It could be a shootout because they're both a couple of desperate teams. Mm. Uh, Vegas and Indy, the Colts are picked by four with a 42-and-a-half point. Again, 42-and-a-half point over under. I... Um, as much as I like Indy, <laughs> that being said, and as much, I think Gardner Minshew has already exceeded expectations in Indianapolis. He's not going to keep his job because Anthony Richardson's the big draft choice, and when he gets healthy for next season, he'll be the number one again. So in that respect, I kind of feel bad for Minshew, but maybe he can – spring this into a starting job somewhere maybe denver maybe one of them places looking for a quarterback and get a shot where he can be a starter for two or three more years i like the kid i think he's got a lot of guts he plays hard it's almost like he's a baker mayfield light kind of thing you know i, I like the kid uh, gunslinger a little bit but and i like his attitude his personality is great uh, I am, but that, all of that being said, as my pal Bill Smith likes to say, in his Colt regalia with the hat on, I am unfortunately going to take the Raiders. And I'm going to go over the 42 and a half. Don't ask me why. I think this could be a shootout too. The Vegas Raiders have a slim chance, very slim, but because they beat the Chiefs last week, have a slim chance to actually win that division if the Chiefs continue to uh, sputter around. Indy, meanwhile, needs this to have a shot at their division or the wild card. So they need to keep winning as well. But I, I, I like how Vegas is playing under Antonio Pierce. Man, he's got them fellas believing. He Let's face it, he cut guys he didn't like. He just – he's taking over, baby. And, and if they don't give him that – we don't want to say permanent because there's no such thing in professional coaching or in pro as permanent. But if they don't give him the regular head coaching job, they're idiots because he's proven that he can get a team ready to play. I, I think of him almost like Dan Campbell. The two of them are like two peas in a pod when it comes to coaching. They're beasts. They were tough when they played, and they get their guys ready to play hard and physical. So I unfortunately, Bill, like Vegas in this game, uh, my heart will be rooting for Minshew and the Colts, but money is money, and we have to act like we're betting <laughs> money here. I'm going with Vegas uh, across the board with the over. Yeah, I agree with you with Vegas uh, playing a lot better under uh, the new coach there. But um, but that being I said. Indy, well, <laughs> Indy was missing Pittman last week. He's going to be ready to go. 
Yeah. And uh, I think that's a big difference when you have a quarterback like Minshew. He needs all the weapons he can get. He needs, he does um, need weapons, right. But, uh, and then Jonathan Taylor's back. Uh, he came back last week and looked I, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to take the Colts. Okay. But I think it'll be a close game. I think it could be a field goal game. So uh, I'll I'll take the Vegas plus four. Okay. And I'm going to take the I'm going to take the under because both defenses are. Pretty okay. Nice. Got it. Carolina Jacksonville Jacksonville's picked by four. Last I knew, Lawrence was going to be out with a shoulder injury, AC joint. Uh. And let's see. That's that, the quarterback. Basically, all I have, uh, Bethard is the quarterback, I think, for uh, Jacksonville without the, and the 36 and a half point over under four points is the spread. Still, I just checked it before we came on air. Um, I'm still going to take Jacksonville and the over only because 36 and a half is low, though Carolina, I don't think is going to score much. Um Jacksonville's got enough weapons that if one or two guys break a play, that could be enough to win this thing. Um, so I'm going to stick with Jacksonville in the over and go from there. Uh, and Jacksonville's desperate, too. They need to win to stay atop of their division. Yeah, I did the same thing. I mean, Carolina has played better the last couple of weeks, but I just don't see them hanging with Jacksonville. Yeah. Though Jacksonville struggled lately. But yeah. yeah, you want the over or the under, sir? The over. Okay. Uh, Tennessee and Texas, four points is what Texas is picked by. It's a 44, fours are wild here, 44 point <laughs> over under. And I am picking Texas. I'm taking the, well, this says the under. Oh, I'm taking the under because I don't think Tennessee is going to score very much. I don't like that under. I'm going to, Take similar to what you had with yours earlier. I'm going to take the over here, Bill, on 44. So I'll take yeah, the yeah. I'll cover uh, Texas to win, of course, and the over. Stroud is back. So Stroud is back. Will Levis is back at quarterback for Tennessee. Um, but I did the same thing. I took Houston in the over. Okay. The over. Uh, Atlanta, Chicago, two and a half points is what the Bears are favored by. It's in Chicago, 38 point over under. I'm taking Chicago in the over across the board. And I did the same thing. Okay. Not a whole lot of analysis there. Heineke's a better quarterback than Ritter. That keeps Atlanta in it to me, but. Fields is still trying to prove that he can be a quarterback somewhere. And uh, I do have, we both talked about this, that Mooney is out for the Bears and Komet, a really good young tight end, is questionable for the Bears. But Hopefully he plays because I have him in my fantasy league also. <laughs> oh, great, right? <laughs> you never know. It's questionable, so he may play. Pittsburgh and Seattle, the over-under is 41. Pittsburgh, uh, Seattle picked by four. I went with the Seahawks across the board. I think Pickett's back for the Steelers at quarterback, though I would question whether to start him or not because I think Mason Rudolph did great last week. But yeah. could have been a one-shot deal. You want your future to play, and they, Pittsburgh still has a chance to get in the playoffs. Uh, I haven't seen that they're not going to start him. I have seen that he's ready to come back and play. So I, I think he'll be in. I'm taking Seattle across the board. Yeah, I just have a hunch. I think I think uh, Rudolph will play or something. But, uh, you never know. That could happen. But, uh, but I got Seahawks across the board also with the under. With the under, okay. And you got the over? Yes, I took the over. Uh Six and a half point spread KC in Cincinnati. Chiefs picked by six and a half. Let's face it, that's only because Browning's a quarterback and not Joe Burrow. Uh, over unders 44. I originally had the Chiefs winning and Cincinnati covering. 
but Chase is out for Cincinnati. Um, Pacheco for Kansas City and Clyde Edwards Alaire, both of their starting running backs, one and two, are um, questionable. Uh, Pacheco's coming back from a concussion. Um, and uh, but he did get through protocol, so he is cleared from protocol. So I expect him to play. Says questionable. I expect now him to play. Uh, Alaire, we don't know because it was an illness, so he didn't practice Thursday, and he's questionable due to illness. Uh, I I think the Chiefs will cover though it's six and a half, and they haven't done well all season with that, and they're at home where they have struggled this season, who could believe they would struggle at Arrowhead. But I think they got a lot to prove. They want to assure themselves. I think if they win the game, no matter what Vegas does, I think they clinch their division. So I think they want to do that. And uh, Browning, we finally saw some chinks in his armor last week. Um, so uh, uh, in Kansas City, this is a rookie quarterback, and they are a blitz team defensively they've played well defensively it's their offense that you know um they can't catch anything they couldn't catch a fish with a shotgun they, they just can't shoot even shoot fish in a barrel they can't catch but hopefully kelsey can catch enough and if pacheco's back he'll run some screens now mckinnon's still out for kc he's still going to be out so and that's a big loss on third down and some pass routes and things but mm -hmm. But there you have it. I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. I feel like I am gambling on the six and a half, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Chiefs to cover and of course the over. The over. Sure. For yep, I got the Chiefs winning, but I did take the Bengals plus a six and a half because uh, Kansas City hasn't been blowing anybody out like they usually do. No, and uh, and I'm gonna take the over. Okay. Uh, Chargers and Denver. Uh, 37 point over under three and a half points is what Denver is picked by. The chargers have guys playing for jobs an interim coach who I don't even remember his name. Um, which is sad that on my part, I knew it, but it memory was gone. Um, and, uh, Russell Wilson is benched. Jason Stidham's going to start the former new England backup is Denver's backup. He is now their starter and probably will be barring injury for this week and next week's games. Wilson's thing is going to turn ugly unless they can deal with it quickly, but it looks like he has played his last down for Denver. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a trade or whatever, he's got a guaranteed 30 plus million dollar contract. So it's going to be hard to trade him unless they're going to eat some of the salary or whatever, but uh but that's pretty much it. I took Denver across the board still, though. I think the uh, it's in Denver. I think the bloom is off the rose. Uh, we'll find out whether the teammates liked Russell Wilson or not. If if they're happy with the move on, then they'll play hard for Stidham, and that might be the difference. Uh, and the Chargers are playing a backup quarterback against a good defense. So yeah. that's, that's the key is the defense is a little better – 37 points the over-under, so I went Denver, Denver, and over. And I did the same thing, bud. All right. And that is the last day game all the way up to Sunday. The final game of the week will be Sunday night football. There's no Monday night game. Sunday night football, Minnesota is starting a kid – from uh, who works at the Mall of America and <laughs> uh, against Green Bay. Yet, Minnesota is still picked by one. It is in the dome in Minnesota. 43 and a half points is the over under. I don't know what people see here unless this kid we missed out is, you know, um, you know, Tom Brady Jr. or something, I, I don't get. I wouldn't even get it if it was Green Bay by one. I just, don't get right. me wrong, these folks pick games, but then again, we kind of beat them, Bill. 
Um, yeah. I'm taking Green Bay across the board in over 43 and a half. Minnesota may have a good defense, but I don't – outside of Jefferson and, and – well, they have – Addison's a pretty good running back, right? Receiver, yeah. Uh, yeah. Chandler. Receiver, I'm sorry, Chandler's running back. But I still don't think it's enough. I, I just don't see it uh, with a rookie quarterback um, who's already gotten one start and and uh, didn't did not fare very well. Dobbs is the backup. I think Mullins actually is the backup, and Dobbs will probably be considered a third string slash inactive guy. Um, I got Green Bay across the board, like I said, with the over 43 and a half. Yeah, I mean this this is a, really a coin flip. Uh, I like I like Jordan Love as a quarterback for Green Bay, but he's got he don't have he don't have the weapons either. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true too. Um, they got the running game, and then Minnesota Minnesota's got the the young QB, but he's got weapons. Right. Um. So just to make it fun, I think I'm going to take Minnesota. It'll be okay. the last game of the year. We'll be we'll uh we'll, I'm going to take the opposite. I'm going to take Minnesota. But I'll take the over also. Okay. So you're taking Minnesota across the board with the over. I took Green Bay across the board in the over. So let's take a look at our differences. We are top to bottom. You took uh, Detroit to win, or Dallas to win, Detroit to cover. I took Dallas across the board. We both took the over. We both took San Francisco in the over. We don't need to waste any more time there. Uh, you took Miami to cover. I did not. I stayed with Baltimore across the board. So we've got a bit of a difference there. Um, oh, Philly and Arizona. You took Philly across the board and the over. I took Philly to win, Arizona to cover, and the under 48 points. Uh, Rams, we both took across the board in the over against the Giants. Uh, you took Buffalo across the board, even though it's 14 points. Man, you got big cojones, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, I took New England to cover Buffalo to win the game. We both took the over. Uh, Tampa Bay, we both took Tampa to cover and win against New Orleans. But you took the over uh, 42 and a half. I took the under, though I think that'll bite me in the ass. I think you probably will win that. Vegas and Indy, you took Indy to win the game, Vegas to cover the four-point spread, uh, and you took the under 42-and-a-half. I took Vegas across the board in the over. Uh, we both took Jacksonville in the over against Carolina, over 36-and-a-half. We both took Houston to beat Tennessee by more than four with the over 44-point over-under. Atlanta, Chicago, we both took Chicago in the over 38 in a point, and we took them across the board to beat the two-and-a-half-point spread. Pittsburgh, Seattle, we both took Seattle to win and cover, but you took under the 41 points, I took over. Cincinnati and Kansas City, in Kansas City, you took KC to win the game, Cincinnati to cover. I took KC across the board, we both took the over. Denver and the Chargers in Denver. You took Denver across the board. So did I to cover the three and a half point spread. We both took over 37 points. And last but not least, because you're uh, you're uh, adventuresome. Not really. You're right. It's basically, according to Vegas, a coin flip. It's a one point game for Minnesota. I took Green Bay to beat Minnesota. So they would automatically cover the spread. And over 43 and a half, Bill took Minnesota across the board and uh the over as well as i did the 43 and a half we both have a win under our belt as far as picks for this week because we both picked cleveland to win the game the difference was bill took the jets because last minute he saw that uh Cooper was going to be out and it didn't matter i think one of us could have been a receiver that game for the for the browns because uh the jets is Zach Wilson hurt? I didn't check into it. I've been meaning to. Because Trevor uh, played the game. Or did he get hurt early in the game? No, no. I think no, no. The Simeon did he just benched? The start and then he benched, I guess. Jeez. 
That kid, don't get me wrong. I'm not sure if he's a good quarterback, but you're never going to find out because he's, it's been up and down like a yo-yo. <laughs> the most he's got to play straight is half a season. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, last year he played most of the year, but uh, different cast of characters. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know now if he's ever going to get a shot to be the number one guy. Yeah, under. I, I doubt it. You know, it's been up and down, up and down, up and down. It may, it may, it may not even be a backup. I mean, some guys just yeah, right. Over the wayside, you know. Just, he may be a, a practice squad guy. Could be like a Josh Johnson that's played almost every team in the NFL at some point. <laughs> the injuries, he gets called up last minute or something. Uh, I took Cleveland across the board. Uh, we both won the over, but I, I got Bill on the spread because he took the Jets and I stayed with Cleveland. But it's early, a lot of games to go. The game today could be interesting tonight because uh, I don't know about the game itself, actually, but at halftime they are finally Jerry Jones finally swallowed his pride or somebody told him to. And they are finally putting Jimmy Johnson, a NFL Hall of Fame coach, into the Dallas Ring of Honor where he should be Absolutely. and should have been years ago. He won two Super Bowls for him, and his players and principals really won a third the next year with Barry Switzer. I mean, Switzer was, even Aikman said, was very hands-off. And mm -hmm. could be because Jimmy Johnson had gotten the right players and they all knew what to do. Uh, and uh, he helped build that franchise back up. And then after he's left, after Switzer, they've been mediocre ever since. Uh, yeah. So uh, he got the right players. Then Jerry Jones took over personnel. I think that's when Jimmy decided to leave. Uh, they had a little feud. And uh, for years, Jerry Jones wouldn't put him into the Dallas Hall of Fame or Ring of Fame or whatever you call it. But um our little show obviously doesn't get seen by those kind of folks i don't think but if somehow it leaks out uh i'm not a dallas fan i'm definitely not a jerry jones fan but i haven't been a dallas fan since i was a kid because of the philadelphia affiliation from where i grew up but i will say and bite my tongue and say this is well deserved it's been long overdue he yes. should he should have been in the hall of fame like he is and he should be in the Dallas, I think they call it the Ring of Fame or something. Ring of yeah. Honor. Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. Yep. Should have been that for years. A lot of his former players are going to be there. And, of course, Troy Aikman is actually one of the broadcasters for the game because it's on ESPN. And instead of Monday night football, they're doing Saturday. There's no Monday night game. They have the Saturday night game this week. And I think it's their last game of the year unless they get a playoff game or something. Uh, but Troy Aikman will be there. So that'll be a great moment, not just for Dallas football, but I think a great moment for the NFL. It's well-deserved. Congratulations to Jimmy Johnson. And congratulations to Jerry Jones, who finally, you know, uh, has decided to finally eat a little crow for the Christmas holidays and and put him in, which he should have done years ago. Absolutely. I think that's pretty much it, Bill, unless you got something. Anything else? Yeah, I think we uh we did fairly well. I mean, yeah, uh, I don't I don't it was, a great, it, was a, it was a great year with you. It was a great year with you and uh looking forward to Been next fun. year. We got another regular season week, which will be health or skelter, because you know some guys will play, some guys won't. Some teams will try, some teams won't. Some teams will be playing for that draft pick. Some teams will be trying to get in a better playoff position. Some teams have no options, so they don't care. Yep. It's going to be an interesting week. Well, 18 now, technically. The 17th game of the season is always a helter-skelter kind of a thing. So always interesting. But, Bill, we were close again. We've got a few games differences again, but I don't see us being more than two or three games away from each other with picks and with the spread by the time we're done. And we beat Vegas every year, my friend, unless yeah. somehow we both go, Oh, and 16, the next two weeks, we're beating <laughs> them again. You'd have won your money betting with us. That's all that matters to me. Uh, playoffs are coming. Uh, 
We'll see that after next week, who's going where. So we'll have one more full week of picks. Then we'll start picking the playoffs for you um, all the way through the Super Bowl. And then uh, we'll probably announce changes uh, in the show or maybe not. I don't know. Uh, nothing big on any of the other sports that I know of. Uh, you know, NBA still kicking along. I know Joel and Beats hurt for Philadelphia, but they – they lost one game, but I think they've won two or three now without him. Um, Draymond Green is still out because he's on the indefinite suspension for his uh, his tirade. There's, his choke there's no, yeah, and there's no word about him coming back anytime soon either. So. No, no, I think the league is going to make him sit a while. It wouldn't surprise me if they don't even address it till after the All Star break, whenever that is. Then they might address it. Uh, and he has still said he doesn't regret his actions. Long as that's the case, he may stay out for a long time. Yeah. All depends. Um, so I don't know of any other big sports news. Hockey's going along pretty well. Um, your team, the Flyers, are still playing a lot better than expected. Oh, playing well, yeah, yeah. They're playing well. They won last night, I think, right? Was it last? Uh, they, they lost an over. They were lost in overtime. Last oh, they lost in OT. Uh, yeah, yeah, they lost in overtime. And, uh, okay. well, I tell you what, that's one team I wish I would have bet on at the beginning of the year because they were. Yeah, they were. You'd win your money they already. Doing anything. Yeah, because they would have. Their their probably win total was probably maybe twenty five games, maybe. Yeah, and they're getting close to doing that already. So, or yeah. so many points. They're playing well. New coach, yeah. couple of new players here and there. New GM, mm -hmm. little by little, they won't win the cup this year. But they're they're gonna, they're not somebody now that people go. Oh, I can't wait to go and and get a win in Philly. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. a good thing. Uh, basketball, Lakers still suck. I'm happy about that. Um, you know, I think that uh, in season tournament hanging of the banners a joke. The NBA wanted it, but it's a joke. Is, you know, yay, big deal. Um, some people like it, but I just, it's all marketing to me. So it's just a way to try to get the name out there and get a, other teams involved in something that's meaningful because they won't be in the playoffs. So, mm -hmm. uh, or they'll be in the playoffs and bounce early. So it's just marketing. Yeah. Um, I think that's really... I don't know of anything else. There's no Olympics. There's no golf. There's no yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing. No cornhole. Yeah. Nothing. Quiet on the <laughs> western front. When you turn on the TV shows, the sports shows, and they're all speculating on possible baseball trades and possible player movement in the NFL or the NBA, that means there's nothing else to talk about. Outside of the Russell Wilson saga at the moment, there's nothing else outside of the games themselves in the NFL. Basketball, we just discussed maybe Draymond and a couple injuries. Uh, hockey's kind of the same way. Hockey and basketball, let's face it, they kind of take a back seat right now till the NFL. Yeah, until yeah, till the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. College football, there was an upset last night. Ohio State got beat by yeah, Ohio State. Kind but of I think the problem with that is when you're when you're, you're when you consider yourself eligible for the draft, you don't play in the game. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, or, well, or transfer. Not, that, that's true. You can take yeah. yourself out of the bowl game. It's not automatic, but you can remove yourself. And of course, if you're looking for a payday, yeah. you're not going to play and risk getting hurt. The other part, though, Bill, if you notice, um, is the transfer portal has affected these bowl games. Because mm -hmm. uh, I know there's a kid from K State. He's not the only one. There's a lot of a lot of students, a lot of student athletes transferring to other schools for next year and have announced it. They won't play in a bowl game for the old team because they don't want to risk getting hurt before they go to the new school. Because now you got all that NIL money, the licensing money, yeah, for you, and that's part of why these kids make those decisions now. I'm only going to get a million, million and a half from K-State. But if I go to Texas, and I'm just making, I go to yeah. Texas, I'm going to get two and a half million next season. 
Yeah. So why would I risk getting hurt in a bowl game and lose a million dollars? Right? Because if I can't play for Texas, I'm not going to get that money. I mean, it just sucks for the, your teammates. You know, you, know, you played all year over together. The, team, the school, the program. Uh, I don't know if the NCAA. I mean, really, I mean, they got to come up with something better because they're some kind of a rule there that which I don't. Yeah, I don't blame. Yeah, I don't blame the guys that don't want to get hurt. But you're saying a big you to your team, basically. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, basically, you're saying, nah, screw the other, you know, fifty-two guys or the other hundred and three guys that are there through scholarships and stuff that, you know, you could always put on your resume, uh, winner of the. well, that's the other thing that gets on my nerves is some of these sponsors for these bowls. I mean, uh, well, they had one of the guaranteed rate bowl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what the hell is that? Uh, Kansas State, they won it. That's cool, but it was the Pop Tart something bowl. Yeah, know? it was. So, yeah, so. everything is sponsored. I'm waiting for the Depends bowl, you know, uh, and the, <laughs> the Tampax bowl. Welcome to the Kotex Bowl tonight. You know, <laughs> the Kotex Cotton Bowl. <laughs> Penn State was losing by 14 in the fourth against Ole Miss. I don't know what happened wow. there. That might be a bit of a surprise. Because yeah. uh, yeah. Ole Miss is SEC, aren't they? A lot of people. Yeah. SEC is the best conference in football. Yeah. Um, My hope is Alabama loses. I, I just don't. Like, oh yeah, you know, but you never know. I, I'm I'm afraid of that one actually for Michigan. I am. Um, but uh we can look at that next week because that's when that big game or first of the two big games happens to set up the third one yep. and go from there. Uh other than that, Bill, I say we uh tell everybody happy new year, enjoy new year, folks. NFL games, enjoy your college bowl games. And whatever sport you're watching, if you do watch this and you have a question or you want to make a comment, please feel free. Um, I know some of you are watching because I see YouTube stuff and Facebook stuff and we're getting views. So don't be afraid to uh, put a comment in the post when you see it, at least on Facebook or on YouTube. But for uh, Billy Smith and his whole crew in in, uh, South Jersey, for me here in Northeast Kansas, for all of us. Public John Media for Dennis and Graldy and the folks at Violent Realty Corporation. Don't forget them, folks. 634 East Landis Avenue in Vineland, New Jersey, 856-690-9482. For all those folks we mentioned, Happy New Year, and we hope we uh, see you guys again real soon. Happy New Year, folks. All right. Take care.